providing advice, advisory services to small businesses on their financial structure, restructuring, growth, those sort of things. And that's the pitch for my business over, but feel free to have a note and speak to me if you want to afterwards. But a few years ago, I worked with a small business in Downpatrick who was struggling a bit, helped him out, he restructured, successfully got back on tracks, all doing very well. And late last year, he came to me and said, sign up this contract, I'm not getting the payments I should have got, what do you think about it? And I started looking into it, and because I've got that regulated background, my first point of call was, well, what's the break it up here? He's FCA regulated, I understand roughly how that structure works, I'll have a chat with him. Phone the broker, very polite, very courteous, had a chat. The unbelievably condescending attitude I got really got my back up. And that got me engaged in this process. And as I started digging, I realized that it was pretty complex and it was gonna take quite a bit of investigation. I then tied up with these guys and I think we've moved it forward. There's a way to go yet. And I'm gonna spend, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes running through the complexity of that response and then our options that lead from it. But I'd start by saying, I'm actually pretty optimistic this is gonna head in the right direction. You know, I hope that's <coughs> a, you know, a realistic view, but there is enough there and there's enough effort, positivity, as Alan said, that this should move in the right direction. Um, if you've got any questions as I go through, please ask. Um, I, I'll try not to get sidetracked because it might take too long, but ask it then, <coughs> ask it then in my slot, or come and grab me afterwards. Um, I hope what I say is gonna make sense. Um, and my final, uh, a good Twitter caveat, all these views are my views as a, um, as a business advisor, um, but I'm pretty sure what I'm gonna say is right. So, why is it so complex? Loads of legal entities, some are regulated, and it's easier to take action against those, some are not regulated, a bit more complicated. There's just a lack of clarity on the process. What actually happened? How were the contracts managed? Who's got, you know, media engagement contracts? It's, I, I've been utterly confused as I've worked through that process. It does not seem it was particularly well structured to me, and that makes it hard to respond to. Beautiful, as has been said, insolvent now. That's a bit of an issue. But, and sorry, and the other media companies, um, Mad Ads and Shoppers Network, basically they're the same as Beautiful exactly the same directors, exactly the same ownership structure, um, but the fact they are all insolvent complicates things a bit. Multiple asset finances, as Alan's mentioned, 90% grown heat, 10% spread through the others, but it makes the response more complicated. Hundreds of retailers have been mentioned. Sole traders and incorporated businesses, that makes the response because of the contractual structure slightly more complicated and it's over different jurisdictions. Northern Ireland, England, Wales, some in Scotland, from what I understand. From what, but what I believe is all contracts are actually in, governed by English and Welsh law. And there's a fragmented response. People doing different things individually, different groups. That makes it all quite complex. And if you step to the other side of this and look at what the asset finances are saying, they're seeing a really fragmented response, and that makes it harder for them to gauge how they should move on. And finally, how do we coordinate that? But that is hopefully a bit about what tonight is about. Another good schematic that I'm going to use basically to describe what I believe has happened. And you know, it's fairly obvious that this is the, the media, the revenue side of it, and this is the two unit cost side of it, with you lot sitting in the just retailing it. Right, the scan, first part of this. It was obviously beautiful media turning up to you saying, take these screens and Alan's described. Fairing litigation, <coughs> that's an issue. You can't eat. You know, you can't go off the Beautiful Media, they do this, but you could litigate the directors of Beautiful Media. There are 
risk in that, there are serious costs involved in that. But you can't rule out going after the people that set the country up. They were at FCA always, <coughs> that's probably beneficial, but harder to act on now. I think the key to this part of the business, if litigation were to occur, and I'm not a lawyer, but if litigation were to occur, is actually what exists in here. <coughs> when Global Media turned up in your shop, did they have contracts from Coca-Cola or the ad agency, whoever it is, or the local business down the street? But those contracts were going to fund the revenue they were going to pay you. They might not have had that, and you could argue in the immobiliable media, whilst I build this network, until I got the screens up, I'm not going to get the advertising revenue. So if you had your cash, you could fund the start of this from money you've got in the business. But I would guess they didn't have those ads, they didn't have the ads, and they didn't have the cash. And therefore, that would suggest the whole start point of this was obviously a scam. But action in that part is probably against the directors. The next step of it, the broker, which was my, where I got dragged into this process. Google Media, I think to start with, and I might be wrong with this, but I think there was a direct approach from Google to Granky at some point. Might be wrong, doesn't really matter. At some point, they bought in Vision Asset Finance, as the broker for these deals. <coughs> they are FCA authorised, so the Financial Conduct Authority, the financial regulator in the UK, allows Vision Asset Finance to work in various areas of the financial system. And they have a duty, the regulator has a duty and a responsibility to ensure that Vision Asset Finance, as the authorised entity, conduct their business in a good and proper way. And that's, I think, an absolute key to this situation. However, you can't phone the FCA up and say, I think I've been ripped off by this broker. It just doesn't work like that. You have to go through the financial ombudsman, and there's a, good, there's a complaint process that I will talk about later. But you will bring Vision in. Vision Asset, they act as the broker. They still exist, and an FCA <coughs> Um, authorised, which provides a bit of leverage for us. Then the asset finance companies, again, I won't dwell on this because Alan's covered it, but Vision wrote these deals to Greenkey Leasing, 90% of them, and 10% to a bunch of other asset finances. And the <coughs> split on that, and again, Alan mentioned, were sort of tier one, tier two, finances and that comes down to what your credit rating was. If they like your credit rating, you went to Greatly Leasing. If they didn't, there was a bit of a different structure with these businesses that staged their payments and therefore managed their risk slightly differently. But <coughs> Vision went to Greatly through GC Financial Solutions, which is Greatly's agent in Northern Ireland. They are different businesses and that to me is key. So you've got that structure. And I'm gonna park the 10% finances at the moment and concentrate on Greenkey at the main point. GC Financial Sol Solutions, not FCA authorized. So they work under umbrellaing it's called. Basically they're using the FCA authorisation that Brokey have to conduct this financial business, but also they're protected by the fact that Brokey is FCA regulated, so that's how that works. <coughs> A key here is how do these two businesses interact? When a salesman walks into your shop and says, great deal, have a screen, you'll get money, you'll pay money, it won't cost you anything, what is actually going on here? I don't know, but from my experience in finance, I think GC Financial Solutions, the agent, are talking to Granky and saying, we have got a thousand screens. This bit of business is going to be a thousand screens over um, a period of time. 
Each one of those is going to be worth about 12, cost about 12 grand. So we want a line for X amount of money. We want you to allocate 10 million pounds to us. And Grunky will look at it, they'll look at the risk and say, yep, yeah, okay, we'll do that. These are our criteria. And I think their criteria on credit rating meant if your credit rating was questioned at this stage, they flipped it off to the other asset manager, the asset finances. If your credit rating was good, it was GC Financial Solutions. GC Financial Solutions had the authority to sign off on it. So your contract was never going to Grunky Leasing UK. To them, it was just one bit of business to this firm in Northern Ireland that they work with. All the sign offs going off going on in GC Financial Solutions. And that's important because I think that's why the initial response to this from Grunky Leasing in the UK has been, it's not an issue. They don't know the scale of the problem that exists because it's been a bit of a fragmented response. And then you look at Grunky Leasing and Grunky AG. Grunky AG is the German parent company. It's listed on the tax. It's registered, it's uh, regulated by BaFin, the German regulator. It's worth about four and a half billion euros. And its UK business is less than 3% of that. <coughs> so this, for Grunky AG, the big, steady, regulated German entity, this bit's pretty irrelevant. This bit doesn't exist on the radar. So all this can happen without the actual care of company being particularly aware of what's going on. So what action can be taken against Grunky? And to me, that's the, the hard issue. I think they are subject to the scam as well when it comes down to it. They're not being clever with how they're responding at the moment. And that's a real problem. But actually, these are the guys that have paid out however many million. And it's disappeared down this end of the um, slide. And that's why they're playing hardball at the moment. And we've got to work to resolve that. So, where do we go for the options? 